there is hope for me. But if the guy that gets judged is the one who's supposed to know it all and have mastered it all and my favorite, been good at it, I'm toast. I'm toast. And that's how I really feel. I felt, I've always felt that way. I've always felt that way. I've always said, I, I, I think everyone else is delusional about heaven. Because heaven is like Christmas. It's a fantasy. Christmas is not the birth of Christ. It's a marketing ploy. It's a, it's a season of ooey-gooeyness that doesn't mean squat. I have a really good friend who's... And I'm saying all these nice stuff because I'm going to insult her to death right now. In case she sees this. Sorry, but tell me I'm lying. I have a really good friend who's like incredibly talented and successful recording artist. And she is a Jew. And when I became a Christian, she said, Why don't you become a super Jew instead? and not betray your people. Well, she just put out a Christmas record. And she wrote all the songs, by the way. It's not just the Christmas crap we're used to. She gave us 15 new Christmas crap songs. They're really good. Seriously, it's a great record. Not my cup of tea, but it is a great record. I, I don't like Christmas music. I, I, don't like, I don't like being bombarded with a Christmas record. That scares me because... Um, Talk about being squished into a very small genre and come up with 15 songs at, about Christmas time. That sounds like hell. That sounds, that sounds like something you could do in one song and move on. But she, she made a great record. She made a beautiful record. And I thought, what a bunch of pooey. Because you can claim Christmas all you want, but damn it, it's about the birth of Christ. And, and anything else is contrary to celebrating the birth of Christ. And if you don't believe that Christ was who he was, as pretty as you make it, it's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. How would you like everybody running around celebrating your birthday and not calling you once on it? And having to watch the whole planet celebrate you and have nothing to do with you? I mean, seriously, I don't mean to be Grinch-like here, but by the way, I'm in a room full of people who actually love Jesus, and so come Christmas, I know each one of us is going to lovingly, in some way or another, say, Happy Birthday, Lord. Thank you for being born. And I'm sure he's really going to like that. And I know how he is, and I know he's going to make us all have a really nice Christmas, no matter what the economy says. I know he does that. But seriously, heaven and Christmas are fantasies. They're fantasies. When you see heaven in movies, it's a fantasy. When you see Christmas in movies, rarely is it about Jesus. It's about a time where we're supposed to come together and love each other. How do you love one another if you don't love him who created one another? It's impossible. He said that. Therefore, heaven is a fantasy. It's a delusion. When I tell people heaven doesn't exist right now, there's no place called heaven. People get really frustrated. They're like, what do you mean there's no heaven? No, there is no heaven. There's no place in another dimension called heaven. As there is no place in another dimension called hell. Well, what do you mean? Well, it had a bunch of other names in the Bible, but it wasn't exactly hell. But we refer to it as hell. See, you pull a tissue out of a box that says um, soft tissue or, or moist mate or something, and you call it a Kleenex. It's not a Kleenex. Kleenex invented it, but now we use all kinds of products and we call it Kleenex. We call a bunch of products. I'm going to make a Xerox copy. I don't think we do that anymore, but we sure did that over the last 40 years. We call, I need a Xerox of this, meaning I need a copy, even if the copier was made, made by another company. Well, hell and heaven are generic terms for two very specific locations. Heaven is the place where God is. Period. Hell is the place where he isn't. Period. But they're not physical locations. There's, there's, there's no 
gate to heaven currently. There's no St. Peter at a gate to heaven because there is no gate. Because there's, there's a, a gate would infer a city or a building of some sort. And it doesn't exist. Nor does a fiery hell exist. There's something far greater than a place called heaven waiting for us. And there's something far worse waiting for people than a place called hell. If they reject Jesus. But these are, are simplified terms for very complex processes Earth and all that surrounds it have to go through before all of this is finished. So it is, it is not a lie to say someone who died knowing the Lord is in heaven. It's not a lie as long as you get that heaven is wherever Jesus is. He's with the Lord. That's a fair statement. And it's not a lie to say, well, they're in hell. I mean, I don't know if we know for sure what happens at the time of death. I'm still hoping for that last chance that Jesus shows up, just in case I blew it. That I get one last Bible study on the way out to get it right. <laughs> to be honest. See, I want one on the way out and on the way in. See that? That's really where I'm at. I think that's a good sign. If I heard that about someone else, I would think that's a good sign that they think like that. But I've had people tell me I sound very neurotic talking like this. And I'm like, well, that's funny. Because if you talk to anyone about your faith, you sound really neurotic. Anybody does. We all sound really weird, even to each other. But the truth is, is all humanity, when they die, since, since the coming of Christ, all humanity, since the coming of Christ, since the since the crucifixion and resurrection, to be exact, all humanity, when they die, go into a slumber state. They go into a slumber state. Now, their experience is the next thing that happens is they are in the presence of God Almighty. Okay? But the truth is, is scriptural evidence, scriptural evidence says that the dead shall rise. Why do they need to rise? If they've already either gone to heaven or hell, what are they rising for the judgment for? Because it hasn't happened. Which infers that they go into a, I hate the word, purgatory-like state of nothing. But, there, but uh, theoretically, it's like anesthesia that our experience would be <laughs> we're here and then we're there but there may be a thousand years in between there may be a thousand years in between this is why um, some lesser religious groups pray for their dead because they think there might be hope this is where that comes from well that's very complicated isn't it because we always say, if you die right now, do you know where you're going to go? Well, people say, I'm going to go into a deep sleep. Yeah, but when you wake up, where do you think you're going to end up? That's the truth. That's the most logical, scholarly perception of what the Bible says is in, in, its, in its entirety about what happens when you die. Now, that having been said, Paul said, you know, to live is Christ, to die is Christ. I mean, either way, I'm going to be with them. Yeah, but it's complicated. We've simplified it because humans are dumb. And, I mean, Jesus called us sheep. He, he couldn't have been more insulting just on smell alone. But um, we've simplified it because, you know, who really needs to know all this? It's like I really don't need to know exactly how my intestinal tract works. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me I have a tummy and it gets full and, you know, I'm good. You know, and it's the same concept. It's been simplified. And it is simple. If you live knowing Jesus, you will die knowing Jesus, and you will spend eternity with Jesus. And there will be some stops along the way to get some business done. And it's a little complicated. And if you don't live for Jesus, you will die without Jesus, 
and you will end up in an eternity without him, but there's going to be a few stops along the way. And you'll have your chance to have, tell him to his face, I never knew you. You won't be doing much talking. He'll be doing the talking. It won't be pretty. But Jesus, the Bible says that, 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 that Jesus is going to be wiping the tears from our eyes. Why are we crying in heaven? I don't think that's good news. See, I don't want to find out I'm going to be crying down long. You're going to be crying one day, but it's okay. Jesus will be wiping your tears. Wait one cotton picking minute. Because if I'm crying for joy, I don't think he's wiping my tears. I think there's some bad news. And I think it has to do with regret. I heard Jack Hayford teach on this once, and he said that when our lives are tried by fire, no matter how great we've been in this life for the Lord, we're going to find out we still miss some opportunities and that's going to make us cry. But Jesus is going to hold us and wipe our tears and forgive us. It sounds like a long day. That scared me. That really went in and it made me really think. So as cavalier as I am in people's eyes, there's one thing I don't feel very cavalier about, and that is entering heaven. I think that I, for one, while according to God's promise and not my personal feeling of my self-worth, I'm accepted in the kingdom and I will be embraced. But I think every last bit of sin is going to burn off at that embrace. And I've seen enough movies to know that's probably not going to be pretty. My fantasy says that's going to be a serious day, a somber day, and ultimately a day of victory and celebration. But it's not just going to be an award ceremony in my honor. And if that doesn't scare you into thinking twice about how you're going to conduct, conduct this life, nothing else will work. Because if you, if you rip that confidence from a Christian that no matter what you do in this life, when you die, that second, it's a big party in heaven. If you just tear away at that just a little bit, you get some good old-fashioned hellfire and brimstone preaching in there, and you get people thinking, maybe I need to take stock in my life. Maybe it's not just out of obedience that I have to obey. Maybe it's because I'd really like there to be a nicer first day in heaven. Jesus said, you people are all wrapped up in, I mean, which wife am I going to be stuck with in heaven? I love that. And he said, but you don't get it. You're not there for yourself. You're going to be like the angels. You're there to serve God. You're there to worship. I like when people say, I think heaven's going to be 24-7 worship with the best worship music known, known to non-humans. Something tells me that my style of music won't be... I love when people say, you're going to spend... Oh, wait till you get to heaven and you're going to like lead the band. I'm like, are you kidding after how many years of doing this, you think that's my idea of heaven? Having to still do it? Gosh. <laughs> Man, my God. Even I think it'd be hell to spend eternity listening to me. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Some of the weirdest things people have said. And they're just trying to be nice. I would be more comfortable listening to Ed all eternity than having to listen to my records for five minutes. That's the truth. That's the honest truth. I mean, my God. I, can't, I don't know any musician that doesn't agree with me. Like, the thought of having to listen to yourself for all eternity, for five minutes, I mean, when you're in the recording studio, it's hell hearing yourself. You just grin and bear it. Because you, you like what's on the other side of that trial by fire. But boy, does it show you every mistake you made. It shows you every way you came up short. Shows you every imperfection in every aspect of you, and only you and God can see it when you hear yourself in a recording studio. Whoever's working with you is going, ah, it sounds great, because they want to go home. They could care less. But you hear it, 
with the worst possible ears. Total unforgiveness. Total clarity. Total clarity. And praise God, I've come to peace with my shortcomings as an artist. But God help me if you turn that light on who I am on the inside. Heaven is a strange word for what that day could be like. I think Jesus was trying to wake people up to start working with their heavenly life now. That to walk in the Spirit on earth as it is in heaven, to be heavenly minded, has to do with making adjustments now. If you know a baby's coming in nine months, you prepare the nursery. Jesus said he prepares a house for us. I hate the sound of that. I really wonder what that's going to look like. I mean, seriously, what fashion sense does he have? You know, what, 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 what sense, you know, really, what, what, what if he does my house in heaven, Southwestern? Oh, no, no, no. This just won't do, Jesus. I'm serious. Who cares? cares. You can put me in a cage for all eternity. Just make sure I can see him. Make sure I can still hear him. Especially considering the alternative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being in a cage for all eternity where I can't. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe I'm aiming too low. Maybe I have real spiritual self-esteem issues. Could be. I bet I'm not the only Christian on the planet who does. I may be the only one who's willing to let themselves be videotaped admitting it. But I don't really care because if this sounds like a cry for help, it's a cry for help. I've never hidden behind my confidence. I've never been. I am very confident. I'm very confident in the Lord. I'm very confident in my talents and skills. I'm very confident. But if I have to take me and put me in, the, in front of God Almighty to be judged... Well, who honestly thinks they're going to survive that with any dignity? <laughs> Seriously. And that doesn't sound good. Well, you made him sound unmerciful. No, nope, I made me sound unmerciful. Because I am un unmerciful with myself. Most people are. And we're unmerciful with each other. Maybe, you know, maybe here we're not. But as humans, we are unmerciful. We're horrible. Look at the way we judge. I mean, I, I, all I can say is look how I've been judged. Wow. If the judgment of God is, is worse than that, well, that's condemnation. Oh. Oh, condemnation and judgment aren't the same thing. Wow. Can you please teach that to the Christians? Because I can't tell the difference between judgment and con condemnation. I can't tell the difference between using your judgment and judging. In Christianity, and wow, that's that's kind of like a revelation to think. Maybe I got, I got them confused. Maybe I'm expecting the judgment of God to be condemning. I don't know. Some wise person said the truth hurts. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, just in case, finding out the truth of how I really am in the eyes of God might hurt just a little. Might sting just a little. Can I be honest? I just want to make it in. That's just me. I, I really don't care. I, I, I'm doing the best I can, and if it turns out that I gambled and I, I gambled and I lost, but he still loves me because I accepted him and I knew him and I'm saved, and I don't get you know, a party thrown in my honor and an awards ceremony, and I don't get the front seat in heaven, and I don't get people worshiping the ground I walk on because I'm one of the pillars of heaven, I care less. I just want to spend eternity in the presence of Jesus Christ. Period. Anything else after that is gravy. I could care less of there being gravy if there's nothing to put the gravy on. I could care less. I, gravy, I'm, I'm not sure I get gravy. I, this has always been something I've never been crazy about is like gravy unless it's really good. But I get that because it's Thanksgiving coming up that people put gravy on mashed potatoes. Gravy would be totally 
useless if there were no potatoes. So in the end, I'd rather there be potatoes if I have to pick one or the other, and I'm going to work towards potatoes, and if gravy shows up, praise God. But without the potatoes, who cares? And I don't have any fantasy about heaven except being in the presence of the Lord, meaning no matter where I am, I can always see Him, and I can always hear Him, and I can always feel Him. And I know by definition that would be heaven. Amen? Amen. <sighs>